posted a video which involved changing, it was an autumnal scene, changing it to LAB mode and boosting the colours in the LAB mode. I received an email from a guy called Vernon and Vernon had a really nifty little trick that meant that we could go back in and we could edit that LAB mode. In fact, it's so nifty, I thought I just had to pass it on to you guys as well. So, what we did in the first video is we started off with our original image. We went to image, we came down to duplicate, and we're going to duplicate, tick in the merge layers only dialog box thing there, tick the button, and there it is. It's down into one layer. It's RGB mode. We're going to go to image, we're going to go to mode, we're going to go to LAB color. Clicking on this, it has now changed it to LAB color. Dropping down, we're going to put in an adjustment layer, we're going to go for curves. Now, when we did this in the original video, we set up a preset. There it is there, and the preset is in the A channel, bringing this in and bringing that in, and in the B channel, doing exactly the same thing. Let's make some changes because it's a slightly different image this time and we get the changes we're going to make are just boost the colors. We're going to take that up into the reds. I'm just going to counteract that by bringing that back into the blues, greens, something like that area there. Looks pretty good. And coming into the B channel, doing exactly the same sort of thing, taking that up and then just bringing that back down like this. That looks pretty good there. Let's go to lightness as well. I just want to sort of uh, increase some of the detail in the shadow areas, just taking it up slightly like that and just bringing the highlights down just to keep those in check and there it is. Right, this is the sort of stage we reached. Now Vernon's very very nifty little trick and I must be honest I thought this was absolutely amazing is press command or control. But don't forget we're working on the adjustment layer so press command or control so we've now got both highlighted right click choose convert to smart objects we've converted it to a smart object that has put the adjustment layer inside the smart object now when we go to image mode whoops, stay thank you we're going to go to the rgb color it's now going to bring up this dialog box telling us that we're changing it and to rasterize the smart object before changes question mark it's suggesting that we do rasterize it. If you did rasterize it, it would no longer be a smart object. We want to keep it as a smart object, so we're going to click on Don't Rasterize. That has now kept it as a smart object. It's gone to RGB color. Clicking down, dragging it up. I'm going to come over to our original, pressing down Shift, dropping it in place. It's gone directly over the top. You can see there's a difference, the before and the after. Like what that's doing to the picture. Just to show this, I've got nothing up my sleeve. I'm going to close this one down. Come into this, and if you decide, yes, yeah, perhaps just a little bit over the top, all right, you could reduce the opacity down a bit, a touch or two, like that, as we did with the original. But with Vernon's nifty tip, all we need to do is just double click. This is now telling us it's going to, after editing, to choose File, Save to commit the changes. So let's click OK to that. Sounds good. We've come back in. There it is. As we left it, it's no longer a smart object. It's opened it back up. But if we take a look, if we click on the layer here, you'll see we're back in LAB mode. In fact, if we come back into the channels, if we double click on this, there's lightness, there's A, there's B. If we take a look, there's the changes we made. How fantastic is that? But it really is. If I just come in now, and if I just do something a bit silly, like take that up like that, you know, as you would. If we now go to file and we drop down to save, watch what happens. It has saved it in this image here, but if we click on this one here, it's done exactly the same. If we just come back, there it is. This is the one in layers. So, all you need to do is save it as a smart object. You can then convert it back to RGB and you can drag it over. How fantastic is that? I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Thanks very much indeed, Vernon, for letting me know. It's As I say, it was, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. In fact, it was so brilliant, I thought I'd pass it on to you guys as well. I'm just adjusting this now and taking a look. Yep, that looks okay there. Don't forget, once you've made any adjustments, go to File, go to Save. Once you've clicked on Save and that's done, we can come in, and there it is. One further thing, what if we wanted to experiment? What if 
we wanted to add another adjustment layer. What if we just wanted to let's have a look, let's just cool things down a little bit. Yeah, something like that. What if you now go to save? How's that going to work? Hmm, could be interesting. Magic or what? It's absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant. So you can actually add other adjustment layers to it as well and changes. I must be honest, it was a fantastic tip. Thanks for that, Vernon. The one thing I love about Photoshop is I don't think you ever stop learning. It is terrific. If you have got a nifty tip that you'd like to share, please drop me an email. You can do so from my website. But until the next time, happy imaging and take care.